Hello everybody and welcome to LMM and it's now time for another episode of Lorry Goes A Little Loco. Today we're doing something a little bit different, for you see I've been invited to this, a private estate railway called the Romsey Horticultural Tramway. And the purpose of today's video is to really show it's not to watch how much space that you have and more how you use it. And that really there is no excuse for I can't model that because I don't have the space. Because if there's a will, there's very much a way. So with that, let's meet the eccentric gentleman who has come up with this fine, fine tramway. It's not a railway, it's a tramway. So this is Zach, and Zach is a lord of this estate, which is quite a grand title for a quite small railway. And I have known Zach now for, well, many years. He's a farmer at one of the railways that I'm a driver at, and he's a driver at one of the railways I'm a farmer at. So that kind of goes together, and hopefully at some point in the future we'll be visiting the railway that he drives at to do an episode of Lorry Goes Actual Loco rather than Little Loco. And Zach has had a miniature steam locomotive for about a decade now. And believe it or not, today is going to be the first time that I have ever driven it. So the first question is, why have you built a railway in your, well, quite spacious garden? <laughs> um, well, uh, the railway is designed uh, to help with the garden. Um, I mean, clearly in, in this enormous um, piece of land, I, I'm quite overwhelmed. Oh, obviously, there is a lot of gardening to do and the railway is the obvious way to move things around. Well, exactly. Um, so uh, I thought, I've got a five inch gauge loco, why not build a five inch gauge railway to move the compost and spuds about? Which is a wonderful excuse to build a railway. It's not an excuse, it's, it's, it's necessary. Uh, it's <laughs> How many people did you have to, to tell it was necessary to get permission to do this? Oh, a fair number, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I probably should have asked the landlord first. But, you know. <laughs> so why is it called a tramway? Because it's Romsley because we're here, horticultural because it's in a garden and yeah. use it for gardening. What makes it a tramway rather than a railway? So it's using the, 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 the word tramway in a slightly older um, context, Okay. where many mineral lines, um, when they were first building them, mm -hmm. um, were using tub wagons which would be hauled by horses um, or even hand trammed uh, I along. See. So it's uh, because most of the stuff I do I move the wagons around by hand, um, it makes sense to, to use the word tramway. That, that makes sense. And how long has this setup taken you to build so far? The, as, it, as it stands at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, which is slightly more permanent than just laying some bits of track down on the lawn, oh, which yeah. I did at first. Um, this has been on the go since about September, so... Um, this is quite impressive then. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it's, it's all very... Um, I mean, I could take this up and uh, move, move house quite, quite readily. Nothing's really very permanent. Um, so it's not... <laughs> I haven't gone to the great lengths that some miniature railway builders will go to um, to make things more uh, stable and substantial. We just... Um, yeah, if there are slight humps and hollers along the way, we just... It's, it's an agricultural railway. Exactly. It's a, a very a light railway, that's what we're going for, yeah. which we've got experience with. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to take you through Zach's locomotive, which is something that I'm very jealous of, and then we're going to fire it off and go through a, an evening's worth of activities of what, what you can do with a live steam locomotive, some railway in your garden, to really hammer home the point of, you can do anything if you put your mind to it with scales, Never say that I can't do it because it's too big. Because there's always a way to do something with it. It might be, some people might think a little different or a bit strange, but there's always a way to make something really quite wonderful. So without that, we're going to go look at Madge. I have no idea how to light a fire on, on this. Do you... oh, well, okay, um, just Is... the same. Um, I just start by grabbing a handful of coal and filling up the bunker. Um, so this oh, is, this I'm a mechanical loader. Um, this is coal which uh, I found in the lab. Zach is a scientist. <laughs> that's that's the, the simple, I, th I think that's the easiest way to describe what you do, Zach. I, I don't know, I prefer the term engineer, personally. But, you know. A scientist slash engineer. <laughs> um, um, and then actually we're going to cheat today. So oh, fire lighters. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> um, so, you know, uh, just tear off a strip and load as much as you like in, uh, saving that one chunk for the shovel. It doesn't fit in. I, it's it's too big. Yeah, in little little bits. Um, and then once once you light the fire, it'll be <laughs> just just push it like shovel a... lumps of coal in until the box is full. I don't think I've ever lit up a a, a small engine like this. I've I've done two foot gauge and yeah. and um, ten and a quarter inch. This sort of device here is a blur. <laughs> Without the draft being sucked through and pulling air over the fire, it won't light. Is one strip enough? So we have a electric fan here to help draw the fire in. Did you save a piece back? I didn't, I chucked it in. <laughs> I, I have saved a piece. Oh, right there. You won't need that much. Oh well. I've, I've saved, I've found a piece. Oh. Stay. Do what you will, and uh, I'll fire up the blower. These matches are terrible, by the way. Oh, thank you for the heads. Up. <laughs> See, these are these are awful. Oh, <laughs> kindling in the fire. That's the spent end. Kindling in the fire. This is um. Oh, hang on! I've got a better set here. Let's try these ones. <laughs> these are terrible. Are these are these better? Yeah. Today on Laurie Goes Loco. Oh, Laurie Goes a Little Loco. Laurie can't light matches. <laughs> Come on, do you need a, a, a PhD in combustion <laughs> to help me? He went into my hair. Fire is... How did you do that? I mean, come on. <laughs> How did you do that so easily? And it was so difficult for me. Right. Is it in? Yes, it is. Okay. And now just start shoveling coal on it. Yeah. Oh, this is quite wonderful, actually. What is Madge? Madge is a, a, a five-inch gauge Achilles uh, design. So it's, it's a design which was um, intended for use on model engineering clubs as a passenger hauler. Um, it's not really based on anything. Um, so it's designed to be f from a model engineer, something. Is it a starter engine, something easier to build, or is it a more complex thing? Because I see the outside valve gear, which is obviously easier to work on as a, a model engineer on the small scale, because you don't need to get inside it. Yes. Yeah. And to, to lubricate it and uh, work with it. Certainly the, the 040 version of this is quite um, common. Uh, so yeah, I think people do build them as a, perhaps even as a, a starter um, loco. I came about this as a box of bits um, at my local model engineering club. Um, so you had everything you needed and it was a, a 3D jigsaw puzzle to put it together? Basically, yes. This is a wonderful way to delay working, but I can't do anything. I need to fire up the locomotive. Well, exactly. Exactly, yeah. So how heavy is it, roughly? I mean, we can carry it. Right, so it's a two-person lift. I don't actually know how heavy it is. It, it's, it weighs a, a chunk. And what would it pull? You said it's built as a passenger engine, so... Peak. Two, two people, three people, ten, twenty. Um, we've had, <laughs> we've had five people behind it up a steep gradient. Um, so I mean, maybe ten on the flat are in ideal conditions. That's a lot for a little engine. Yeah. So oiling about, I've got to oil up the main lubricator there. Liberated, yes. All right. Liberated. Yeah, and then. Oil just round on the on the motion. Yep. Not forgetting the axle box uh, oiling point. So there's also two eccentrics on the inside for the water pumps. And how do I get to those? Are they through the front? Uh, yes, it's a real pig, but you can do that. So that oh, good. I'm going to I'm going to enjoy that then. <laughs> And is, is that it, everything else? You filled it up with water earlier, yeah. and you've uh, and that's put the water into the tanks. Mm -hmm. What made you buy it? Well, I mean, was it something you'd always wanted to buy something like this? Or did you just go, this fate has told me? Well, um, I, I, I bought it so quite a long time ago, um, when I was, uh, just before I learned to drive, actually. Um, so you could drive this before you could drive a, a road yes, vehicle? Uh, in fact, I... Yes, uh, I, I learned to drive a steam engine before uh, before road vehicles. I mean, to be fair, that's a good way to start your education. Sure, absolutely, yeah. Um, so I knew at the time that because I was going to learn to drive, I'd probably not have a lump sum of money 
Mm. Um, for a long time, because then I've, you know, I've, been a, I've actually been a student ever since. Mm. Um, so, um, and I used to teach the piano, so um, that was fairly lucrative. Oh yeah, Zach is quite musical. <laughs> Um, so it, it, it's with that money that I bought, um, I bought this as a, as a box of bits um, and got it, got it going again. The first urge was to remove this wagon out of the way. And all that involved was for me was to drive this out of the way. There we go, that's a... A start. Bring me legs in. So I'm going back that way. Meanwhile, the owner, who is now the shunter, will change the points so we can use the alternative form of moving things around to uh, clear the running line. It's all downhill! That goes quite quickly on gravity alone. Yeah. Oops, sorry. I think you kicked your engine and not me. Got the road. Whistle, as important. So nice to have a proper whistle. <laughs> this is the best bit to come through all of this. Scared of this bit of track. This is Zach's new bit of track. My knee. Well, I can come with you this time. Oh, Maybe excellent. Just change the point. Warfire. fire. Always. You've lost your rank. I'd put it somewhere. Where are we going? Are you ready on this long and audious, <laughs> audious trip? Drive on. And um, presumably very, very slowly over this bit. Yes, please. Oh, hello. Oh, no, we're over. <laughs> It's all right, I'll put fish plates on it soon. <laughs> We're on. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> it's silly. This is so very silly, but this is fantastic. I admire you so much for building this. <laughs> yeah, once we're through the wildflower patch, we'll be okay. Right, uh, so you're going up onto the shed line now. Yes, where this other, oh, the other wagon is out of my way. So this is wonderful, Zach, to, to build something like this and just... There you go. Nope, it would not work. The added complications of running a small locomotive. Yeah. Oh, this is very... Down we go, down beside the tomatoes. <laughs> this is so... I'll, I'll get the points. <laughs> this is so minimum gauge, it's unreal. <laughs> right, you're there. Do you know what I really like about this? Is you've stopped it from being a miniature plaything. You've turned it into an actual railway. Yeah, exactly. You it doesn't go round and round. <laughs> you are redefining minimum gauge. And, and, and I really like that. Right, so there's a really steep gradient down into the polytunnel. Okay. So um, do I've, your best. I've got the, the feet brake ready. Oh, I can feel that. Right, we'll leave it there for now. Right. I'll get that. So um, I'll just pop these in there. Oh, I see. This is a clever system. These are my next, uh, my next lettuces. Oh, I see. Um, red, red Brussels sprouts. Who knew? Uh, and some tweed as well. So I'll just pop them in there. It's not very nice to take Swedish people and put them in pots. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so you just pop the carriage in there somewhere. Reverse into forwards and the whistle. And into the. Uh... Hopefully this bit. <laughs> yeah. No, that'll do. Ooh. That'll do. There is a plant in my vision. Okay, back you go. I will need to put some water in in a second. Okay, we'll, we'll go back up there and uh, okay. attend to the water. Whistle, reverse, steam, and away we go. Oof, this is quite entertaining. Right. Road changed. And we...
So, uh, the first movement is that we need to get the washing in, which is over there. And there is a plan for this. We have a container there. And there does seem to be a, a logical way of doing it, as one would pick it up, but that's, that's not the plan. Well, no, if you have a, a system of, of wagon chassis with interchangeable bodies, you can put your extremely nice uh, Talis Lin inspired laundry baskets on your wagons, um, which makes them terrifically easy to roll around the garden. Oh, I mean, this is obviously the easier way much, of doing it. Much easier. Right. Much easier. So the loco is uh, indicating what's to go, so let's go. Ooh. He's terrifying the downhill section there. <laughs> oh my, we're going a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need, need, need coming on that line, do I, to yeah, get closer? Yeah. Oh, very much, very yeah. wise. Back you go. Okay, we can go forward, can we? Yep. And come towards the uh, the washing. I love how close it gets to buffer lock during all of this. All right. So do I do I carry on with a slow move forward during this? Issue. This is what this is without doubt the best way I've ever seen of bringing in the laundry. your loading gauge I think I may be out of gauge and now with the uh, washing safely delivered yep thank you very much indeed uh, we'll move on to the next task let's pop this inside clearly clearly the easiest way to have done that I mean that that over there that is a mighty journey that warrants the use of a steam locomotive for yeah 100% for sure right handbrake off between the legs into reverse whistle Pardon? Uh, I, you, you know how you disconnected this wagon? It's not very disconnected. Um, we'd probably better take a top off. Okay. And we'll pick up these tenders, so if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Oh. <coughs> what gear? Brake. Brake is off. Brake is off. Oh, sorry. Just on heavy. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> this is a silly, silly thing. How dare you? <laughs> it's quite wonderful, Zach. It really is. But it's certainly very silly. I love the sound that the uh, the wagon makes every time this, this cup goes. That makes bong. I've got to get all the way up there, have I? This is a steam powered wheelbarrow, that's what this is. Yep. Great, thank you very much. I believe we're there. So, uh, now, pop that there. Um, do you want a break or do you want a different job to do while I do this? I, I have a different job. Okay. Um, there are some bricks in a pile down by the house. Yes, I see them. They could do with going back into the garden if you keep tripping over them. Okay. Um, so, if I unload this, the potatoes. And I'll get riddling the potatoes through. And I'll start going off on another adventure. Exactly. Um, so, I'll just, I'm just going to empty these bags of, of compost and potatoes into the compost bin. Mm -hmm. And I'll use this as a, a screening device. So don't tell the co-op. Uh, um, as, a, as a screening device. Uh, I'll keep this here with me and then you can pick up that flat and you can have two flats to uh, you pick up bricks. your bricks. Lovely, away we go. That's the regulator there. Nice control. That. Put in forward, so that's our reverser, so forward and backwards. The regulator there, then that control is for the blower. Right there is the pressure. Right there is for the water feed, and that there will turn the injector on. And that's just the whistle. Basically a crane. Oops, bushes. I love how it almost buffer locks going through there. It's almost as if it was designed not to. Right onwards.
Oh yeah. Only a simple salad, I'm afraid, but we've picked and transported most of this by rail. Um, save the bacon. Uh, you know, maybe in a couple of years we'll have some pigs to uh, mess around with, but um, yeah, I hope that this tastes all the better um, for it. For being a steam hoard, steam hoard express cook, not cooked, transported, steam transported dinner. Mm. Steamed vegetables, wait, no. <laughs> now, while it's quite easy to pass this all off as being, well, a little bit silly, it's worth noting there is actually a point to all of this. In railway terms, we have something that we call minimum gauge. And these are generally accepted to be 15 inches, which is the same as the Rummy Hartham Dinchurch, the Beer Valley, La Ratti, Kirkley Site Railway, and a handful of others. Now, this was really pushed by a gentleman called Arthur Haywood, who has a valve gear named after him, I believe. And his idea was that in the wall, 15 inch gauge was the perfect gauge for doing railway things for the trench railways. It's small, lightweight, easy to move around, yet you can carry a lot on it. And whilst the army had worries about the stability of it and decided to go with two foot gauge, the idea of this minimum gauge has been around for a long time. Minimum gauge being the trade off between something being too small to be useful. How small can you go before you can't actually do anything useful with it? You know, the, the wagons become too small to put somebody on, too small to move things. So when we have something like this, which is five inch, which is generally accepted to be just a modeler's gauge, to actually be doing something useful with it, to be mucking about, but to load up things, shift things around on it, it's an interesting concept of the, a garden, a garden railway, a light railway in fact that's actually serving a purpose it really is something that shows well just something a, li a different interpretation of how things work and showing that the little gauges did actually still have some use you can actually do something with these small toy or model gauges you can do something and make them well make it useful I mean there are model engineer societies all around the country that have days where they run run trains to the public and bring money in but uh you know it's a it's an interesting concept this and to actually see something to be done with it well it's quite interesting it really is quite an interesting idea and kudos to zach to actually make something out of five inch gauge so guys we've now come to the end of all the tasks that i've had to do today with this absolutely wonderful minimum gauge setup which I'm very jealous of. When Zach first invited me around here to have a play, I thought, there's not really much we can do in a small garden. And I'm very happy to be wrong about that because this, this is quite wonderful. And I have had a lovely afternoon shunting back and forth. And that's just what I'm going to do for the remainder of the evening is I'm going to keep shunting back and forth. So I hope you've enjoyed this video with this different setup. And I hope it's inspired you to look beyond constraints of space because it is amazing what you can fit into not a lot of room and with that guys i really hope you've enjoyed watching this if you haven't already please help us out by liking this video leave a comment what do you think of this amazing setup have you done something similar or can you show me something that competes with this for sheer amount of setup in a small space and of course subscribe if you haven't already and share this video with your other model railway and model engineer friends. I'm sure some of them would like to see it. So with that, I'm going to disappear. But if you have enjoyed this, how about clicking over there for one of my model railway videos? Or how about clicking the other side for a review I've done on a full size locomotive? Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>